If you're tuning in, it's probably getting close to Christmas. Right now, we're coming up to Christmas 2023, just 12 days out on the day that I'm filming this. And that means we need to be making progress on our Christmas music if that's part of your holiday tradition. So let's get right to it. So just like the tutorial for We Wish You a Merry Christmas, we're learning two different variations for the left hand here. And we're going to start with the simpler of the two and it's really quite straightforward. It's just long notes, dotted half notes, almost the entire time, just a little bit different at the very end. And I'll walk you through the patterns. So middle C is here and we're starting at the C below that with our fifth finger in the left hand. And the, the thumb is already naturally resting on the G that we need. And so we're starting with C and then we have G. And what we want to do is we want to play the C. And if you manage, if you end up letting go of the C, it's not the end of the world, but it sounds really nice if you play the C two, three, and then hold on to that while you add the G on top of that for the three beats. This kind of, if you're new to playing the piano, this helps you create a sort of pedal effect without having to worry about bringing your foot into the mix. P adding pedal can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming in the early stages of learning. So we're trying to avoid that. Um, it's also a really good coordination exercise. This is preparing you to play full chords, uh, a lot of benefits to learning this pattern. So. Um, I'll just walk you through it once and then after I've played it once and counted you through it then we'll go back and talk about a few little details. So we're starting on the C below middle C. One, two, three. Add G, two, that repeats. C, two, three. Add G, two, three. Then comes B, two, three. G, two, three. Then back to C, two. G, two, three. So you'll notice we stay pretty close to a five finger position. The fifth finger slides from C down to B for one spot, but the thumb is actually playing G the entire row. The thumb doesn't have anything else to do. Every second measure is a G. Straightforward. Then in the second row, we're going to keep having the C, G pattern that we had in the, at the very beginning. We're alternating that with F with our second finger, which is already naturally laying there. And our thumb is the one that has to slide around now. So the thumb slides over to A. And then we go back to C, two, three, G, two, three. And that pattern repeats. So we can have F, two, three, A, two, three, C, two, three, G, two, three. Play through that as many times as you need. I would recommend counting it at least sometimes. You can also just kind of play the pattern to get used to the movements. A, C, G, F, A, C, G. So you can really speed it up a lot to just get used to where the fingers need to be moving, get used to the coordination, get used to this idea of holding one while you play the other, and that should come together pretty smoothly. Then, the third row is very similar to the first row. We have basically the same patterns, except at the very end, we have kind of a little flourish that fills out a full chord. Um, so now instead of starting on C, we're starting with B to the G with that pattern. And then we go back to the C, G, two, three, G, two, three. We have C again, two, three, but then this time, the fifth finger slides over to, to B and we're playing it at the same time as our G. Two, three, and then it slides back to C, G, E, C, two, three. So I showed you this way so that you can kind of see the movements and all of the moving parts that are going into this section. Now let's play through it once, counting and, and making sure that we have everything ironed out. So we're starting with five on B. Our thumb is still on our trusty G here. And I'll count you in. One, ready, go. B, two, three. G, two, three. Back to C, two, three. G, two, three. C, two. Now the chord. And at the end there, you have the option. You can either 
kind of leave all of the notes laying after you've played them like we do in the in the other sections or you can play it exactly as it's written and you just play very strict quarter notes one two three and you're releasing the other notes after you've played them then let's try putting that the hands together also because the left hand is always playing these long notes except for the very end it's pretty straightforward to get them put hands together so it means that the hands are always playing at the same time on the first beat of every measure and then the right hand goes about its business while the left hand is just holding the notes let's go nice and slow to get used to the patterns to get used to the coordination so we're starting with our fifth finger on c here and our second finger on g the g above middle c if you have any doubts about the right hand go back and watch through the first tutorial make sure that you've got all of that ironed out and really ready to roll and then meet me back here and we'll put it hands together so we're starting the hands together play on one one two and three and then again on one two three one two and three one and then here we have our first changes. So that stays pretty nice and neat in one hand position until this point. And then here, the fifth finger in the left hand slides down one to B, and the right hand has to slide over to, to get to D up here. Really, each hand only needs to move over one key because since we've had our second finger on G here, that means our fifth finger was kind of naturally laying on C. That means you just have to slide over one key to get to the right spot and then the left hand it's the same so both hands shift over one and then they play together one two three one we have our trusty g here that we've had this whole time the fourth finger stays on c where it's already kind of naturally laying the fifth finger in the left hand slides back to c two three and then both hands play g with the thumb at the same time just different g's so now i'll play through that and keep it really steady once you're welcome to play along if you want one ready go one two and three one two three one Forward, right if you had any troubles keeping up if you had any troubles keeping it really steady just go nice and slow don't worry about the rhythm in the beginning phases just make sure that you're getting everything lined up together how it needs to come together and the rhythm you'll fill in later just kind of take off that pressure of keeping it really steady and strict and and work that in once you've got the coordination down coordination always comes first then we can start to deal with the rhythms again then let's put the second row hands together so we have the third finger on a in the right hand second finger on f in the left hand this is again the spot where the thumb is going to be the the finger sliding back and forth between g and a beyond that the coordination is pretty straightforward so let's just walk through it nice and slowly one ready go one two three sailing hopefully again if it's if you had any trouble no problem don't worry slow down take your time work on the coordination put everything back together once you've got everything ironed out and then we've got the third line to put hands together so here we have a little bit more movement going on but rhythmically how the hands line up is exactly the same so you're going to be fine i'll just walk you through this row once nice and slow also we're starting with the fifth finger on b the third finger on D in the right hand. One, ready, go. One, two, three. One, two, and three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and three. One. Now 
the next step here. The left hand is what we've been learning is basically just a very rough outline of the chords that make kind of the skeleton of Silent Night. That's maybe not a very Christmassy way to describe the chords, but chords are just the, the foundation of any music that we learn. In the first variation, the left hand is a very straightforward version of the chords that we have going on so that we don't have a lot of motion, we don't have a lot of rhythm to worry about. It provides us with this nice basis that we can build on and the melody just kind of flows on top of it. Really beautiful. If you want a little bit more color, if you want a little bit more movement, then go ahead and learn the second variation here also. So really quickly, let's do one very quick step in between and then we'll get started. So the left hand in the first row is alternating C major with G major. And the G major chord, we're going to be playing what's called a seven chord. We're going to add an F to the chord, which means that we can leave out the D. We're going to drop the D We're going and we're going to be having G, B, F is the combination of notes that we have. But we're also going to be playing them in a different order because you probably noticed this is not where we were playing before. We are going to stay in the same position. And so the bass notes, especially the first note of every measure is just like we've had until now. The C major chord is going to be starting with C and our G major chord that we learned before, we started on B and that's what we're doing here as well. So the, for C major, learned that our notes are C, E, G for the C major chord, and we're just going to play them a little bit out of order. We're going to do C, G, E, C, G, E. So bottom, top, middle, bottom, top, middle. And then we're going to keep that same pattern for our G major chord. We learned that our notes that we need are G, B, F, but we're playing them in this order. B, G, F, B, G, F, and then from there we go back to our C major chord. G, E, C, G, E. And then how do you practice that? Practice, you can practice playing all of the notes at the same time. That also sounds really nice. You can also make that one of your own variations. You don't have to play the variation exactly like it's written here. Um, so you can practice getting comfortable with the fingerings and just moving back and forth between those two chords. And then just practice the left hand alone until you can get it to really flow smoothly. It does not need to go this fast, but if you're able to practice it that quickly, that means you've really got the flow down. You've really understood how that section is working. You do not need to practice it that quickly. That's just if you want to practice learning an accompaniment pattern and building up the speed of that, you can work towards that. Then for the second row, again, we have two chords that are just switching back and forth, except this time we have F major and our trusty C major that we've had. And the C major is going to be just like we saw it in the first row of this section. The F major is going to be starting on C. A, F is the pattern that we have for our F major chord. And then we have our trusty C major, C, G, E, back to C, A, F, C, A, F, C, G, E, C, G, E. Again, you can practice blocking those chords. Making sure that you use the right fingering the whole time. And once you're comfortable with the fingerings and the notes and the motions, start slowly. And from there, you can start to build up the tempo. So I wouldn't try to speed up in the middle of playing the section, but you can repeat it a few times and every time you go just a little bit faster until you're really comfortable with the pattern. And then the third row uses exactly the same pattern. So bottom, top, middle, bottom, top, middle. We're starting with our G major chord like we had in variation one. So we're starting with B, G, F. We play that twice. And then we have C major three times in a row. Two, three. 
one more G major, and then we finish up with C major. Again, practice those patterns until you feel really comfortable with it, and meet me back here next week, and we'll start putting that one hands together as well. Congratulations, you've got one variation of Silent Night hands together. You're absolutely welcome to start putting variation two hands together on your own until the third part of this series is published. And we've learned a little bit about chords, we've learned a little bit about how to line up the hands and put everything together, how to work through different variations. Maybe you can kind of see my thought process behind how we can take basic chords and turn them into different patterns also. And from there, you can start creating your own variations as well. Until next time, happy practicing.